Oh, 100%, especially today, even more than the matches before. Brutal match, brutal match. Be because brutal conditions, so tough, uh, so humid today. Like when I practiced uh, before the match, like usually four hours before the match, straight away, I was like, oh my God, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for everyone who, who was there today. Um, some people uh, uh, bear better with the heat, some people worse. I feel like I'm not the best one in this case. And at the same time, I feel like I, I fight many times through it quite well. So that's kind of what happened today. And uh, I managed to, to raise my level. It was uh, amazing uh, last three sets. So really happy and hope I can play the same way uh, going further. All right, congratulations once again. Thanks. Name and affiliation, Richard. Richard Osborne, usopen.org. Congrats on the win. Thanks. I just wanted to ask you, your matches with Andre have been have been great. I just wanted to you to talk about your relationship with him. Obviously, it's unique, and you guys have a good time together. I remember at Labor Cup when you were <laughs> mocking him a bit, but just talk about... I always do. And talk about that relationship a little bit. Well, oh, I think we're really close friends, and uh, I think we have great relationship, and even if they're on the court, we're big competitors, so I do think one match could be, a, when I say a fight, like we could talk or something like this. I think nothing uh, is gonna, let's call it, come between us to, to separate us in real life. We're really close. I mean, we, we, we share a lot of, let's call it, interests and stuff like this. So it's, it's great to have someone like this on tour because sometimes it can be not easy. You travel, 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 and to have a friend like this is great. Um, and not much more to add. So, but again, on the court, we both want to win and uh, we're not gonna be friends uh, in two days. Okay, Craig. Daniel Craig Gabriel, Nine Australia. A um, couple of things. What do you think caused that to turn? Um, Alex said, he, in paraphrasing him, that he lost his legs in the match. Um, Great to hear. And uh, because the, you know he's played so much. And were you having breathing problems? It looked like they gave you an inhaler at the beginning. Yeah, the thing is that I don't think it worked because I kind of don't know how to use it. So. I don't think it worked, but uh, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it was very tough to breathe in the beginning for me. So I didn't know before a Connell match that you could do it. But I was like, I really have troubles breathing. So now I'm not going to joke about it like two days uh, or four days ago. I'm going to use it um, again. Did it help me or not? I'm not sure it worked. Uh, the, the actual thing, the inhaler, I'm not sure it was working. So. But I was like, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, but it's great to know that someone like Alex, for me, probably top five uh, most physical guys on tour. I'm sure he won a lot of uh, five setters in his in his life and stuff like this. During the match, uh, I, it was tough for me all the match. I mean, it was really like, <laughs> I think I never changed that many t-shirts and that many towels during the match. But I was, during the points, I was like, wow, I feel, I do think he's struggling a little bit to move. So I was like, okay, I'm struggling, he's struggling, let's go. Uh, I think the turning point was second serve. I managed to serve very well until the end of the match. So that gave me some air on my serve to kind of relax a little bit. Um, and I managed to, um, to put just a little bit more pressure on his serve here and there, and then the match turned. Okay, Brian. Brian Mahoney, Associated Press. You mentioned after the last couple matches this idea of people cheering between first and second serve. Is that just it's disrespectful, it's aggravating, you don't like it, or is it actually throw you out of rhythm, like you're they're affecting your playing ability? Oh, it's super annoying, especially for me, because I don't, um, how you call it, bounce the ball. Like some players bounce 10, 15 times, sometimes six. I usually do two or three. So it's kind of, if someone shouts in this moment, whoever bounces six or seven, they can just redo it again. I kind of always do two or three, so it actually throws me out a lot. And that's what I said today after the match. Today, I don't know what's the reason why before that it was not like this, because I was playing Australian uh, kind of at night on the uh, same stadium uh, four days before. Today, uh, again, it's I kind of don't care if they cheer more for me or for Alex. This is uh, crowd preference, you know, depends many things, whoever comes in the stadium. But today was super respectful. I don't think there was uh, one guy who was uh, cheering between uh, first and second serve, shouting or uh, clapping. It was an uh, amazing feeling to play like this. And 
yeah, sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's not. You have to win no matter what. It's just that uh, it's a little bit tougher when uh, people shout between first and second. And again, if the rule is one day is going to change, I'm not going to argue against this anymore because that's the rule. For the moment, the rule on the tennis court, you cannot do it. So even if the guy does it two times, I'm like, throw him out. He cannot do it. That's the rule. Okay. Tomani. Hi, Daniel. I'm Tomani Gara from The Guardian. So just wondering, is it possible to actually prepare for really humid conditions or do you just do your general training and trust that it works? I don't think it's possible because I was thinking about this during the first set when I was struggling more than him. I was like, I feel like I work a lot. I don't want to compare myself to other tennis players, but just talking about myself, I feel like I work enormously hard on the practice court. I mean, in south of France, so it's uh, brutally hot uh, in summer. And we do specific like practices, let's call it for a Grand Slam, like three hour practices where I basically run a lot and hit a lot of balls and stuff like this. And same, sometimes it's tough, sometimes it's easier. And during the first set, I'm like, I do all this and I feel horrible. <laughs> so I'm like, why do I have the feeling that some guys uh, maybe don't do it, but feel okay? And that's when we come to where at one point I was like, ah, maybe he's struggling also. And I was like, okay, it's tough for everyone. Just uh, just have to deal with it. Good, good. good, good yeah. On, on another note, you, you decided to make Andre the godfather of your daughter. Hmm. I was wondering, was that an easy decision to make and how you came to that? To be honest, yes, because, uh, yeah, as I say, we're really close. Um, I don't like to, let's say, label like best friend because I would want to say I have a lot of best friends. I have a lot of good friends, uh, but we're really close. So it was, uh, I, uh, he's very kind. Um, he's kind of a little bit uh, into uh, how we can call it, like he's religious. So that's important to be a godfather. Uh, so it was kind of an easy decision, yeah. Andrew, good. Andrew Jones, ESPN, ANCA. Um, Danil, when you hit that tweener in the beginning of the <laughs> second set against him, and that was part of turning that tide and being able to overcome his best with how he was able to get that win against you, not only Montreal, but last year, of course, in the fall. How satisfying is that to do and be able to overcome Alex's best? It was a very satisfying match because, again, he beat me last two times. It was close matches, but he played well. And today, first set, Felt like he couldn't miss. I was missing just a little bit too much, but even if I wouldn't, I felt like he was playing, I mean, top level. Like, I don't want to say top one, top two, top level. Uh, touching a lot of lines, playing on the line, going to the net, doing some amazing volleys. And I was like, wow, I mean, he's actually destroying me right now. That's why the score. Uh, and to turn around a match like this is always a great feeling. It gives you like a lot of confidence for next matches. Uh, and tweener, yeah, it's very rare that I do a tweener and I make it in. And actually, I guess bias, I made one, uh, and I almost won the point. Uh, and here, yeah, I, uh, I kind of many times also I don't go for the tweener because usually you have the chance to make a lob and get back into the point or something like this. So I'm not a huge fan of tweener, even if on practice I do it a little bit more for fun. But here I, I felt like it was uh, kind of a good opportunity to do it, like I was a little bit late. And I just went for it and to, to win it, the crowd cheers you on. Then next game I had uh, one uh, also amazing point, kind of pumps you up. So yeah, that was great to do it in this tough moment. And speaking of uh, pumping up and fun, tomorrow on the bottom half of the draw to have um, Shelton and Tiafo face each other at the obviously Novak and Taylor. Just your thoughts on that energy and if you're going to be able to watch a little bit of it before you know you prepare, of course. Funny, I was waiting for this question because I guess in a lot of hotels they have Spectrum. So I cannot watch it on TV anymore. Uh, but uh, I will, uh, I don't know if it's legal or illegal, but uh, I have to find a way because I cannot watch it on TV. So I go on the internet and probably this, how you call it, pirate websites or something. <laughs> so I watch tennis there, have no other choice. Um, so, and, but at the same time, sometimes I do want to watch some series. So I'm like, do I put it on the phone or not? So I watched uh, Djokovic with Jerry uh, till it was 2-0 and then I had to go to sleep. Uh, so probably I'm going to watch it if they don't play too late. Um, my phone, if uh, Spectrum and Disney don't find the agreement. Uh, but it's, uh, I think, you know, um, I would say more about uh, Tommy, uh, Taylor and Francis, just because of the ranking, uh, that 
it's great, you know, to see three Americans uh, that uh, that high in the rankings. They're great guys, kind of same generation, playing great. Ben managed to win to Tommy, so he's there, uh, like the the third one. Uh, and it's going to be a great atmosphere and a great match, and definitely at least one American in the semis. So let's see. Okay, Andrew, in the back. Andrew, I can also the ATP. Obviously, you're focused on the U.S. Open. I understand that, but you qualified for the need to ATP finals again. Just how nice is it to be done with that so early in the year? It's it's tough to answer because probably I mean let's call it after Rome, you kind of know well if. I pr I'm probably there. It's just nice, you know, to have it official. I mean, to kind of know, well, I can, <laughs> I can just stay at home and still go to Turin, <laughs> which is very close uh, from me. So it uh, would be a nice trip. So that's uh, that's a nice feeling to be there that early. I mean, probably together with Carlos and Novak. I um, think that's only second time I qualify that early. I don't know when I beat Novak here if I qualified already. Anyway, doesn't matter, but... Uh, Happy, happy to to be there, fifth or sixth time in a row, and hopefully many more. Pat, did you have a question? Yeah, Pat Boyle, CBS Sports Radio, WFAN. Congrats on the win, Daniel. Um, Thanks. You and you and the crowd here in New York often have an interesting relationship. Uh, not afraid to let them know when they've annoyed you, uh, but yet this is your best slam in terms of the results over your career. Um, I know you say you're hardcore specialist. There's only two hardcore slams, but what is it about New York that that brings out the best in you? Well, first of all, the energy of the crowd is amazing uh, because uh, here, so what happens is, let's say you take out of context just my couple of interviews, even here this uh, two weeks, and people seem like, oh my God, he's again have this fight with the crowd, but it's not true. Uh, my relationship for this year is amazing with the crowd. It's as I say, maybe sometimes there is five, 10 guys that just try to throw you off between first and second serve. Today was not the case, but in general, the relationship uh, has been uh, great ever since 2019 final. Um, one of the, in terms of the crowds, one of the best tournament uh, I played during the year. Really, really happy and excited always to come back here. Um, and I think the court suits me well. Uh, even if this year I thought it's kind of, let's call it too slow. So far playing great and feeling great. So the court suits me well. Usually these balls uh, suit me well, even if same, I feel like they make it heavier and heavier uh, from year to year. Um, so hopefully, yeah, I'm going to be able to play many more times like this in US Open.